Man, you guys are on fire. God is so in this place. He's so in this movement. You know you're a movement, right? You're not a monument. You're a movement. And you're going somewhere. I see God taking you from glory to glory, from faith to faith, strength to strength. And you've seen a lot, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a confession to make. I love this church. I love this church. I was on the website. I don't, I don't, especially late. This is my first time actually speaking outside of my church. Um, invitations come in, but we just, I've just been real selective, kind of as pastor said, just real collect, selective about, about where I go and where we go. And, and, uh, and God said yes to this a few months ago. And, and so then I went and I went to the website and I just began to, because sometimes even on the website, you can see the spirit of a church. And I saw the heart and the vision and the ministries and the, the kingdom focus and the outreaches. And, and, and I love the, the vision to make disciples that make disciples. And I was slain. I'm like, I cannot wait to get there. And then I, I did a little stalking of your Wednesday night service when Pastor Marco got up here and just released glory. And I was telling my wife, my girlfriend is here tonight, Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts is here tonight, my girlfriend. And I, I, I turned her on and I had the YouTube playing on my phone. I was walking through the house. I'm like, you got to listen to this. I'm like, I love this guy. I'm like, I love him already. And then having a chance to meet Pastor Lisa as well. I just thank God for all of you, all the hospitality you've shown us. Thank you so much. I so greatly appreciate being here. And, 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 I, and I believe I've got a word for you. And, and if it's not for you now, it'll be for you one day. Sometimes you just take a word and you got to put that word in your back pocket. Come on, somebody. Because you will need it one day. And, and so I want to get into this. Let me say one more thing, too. 17 years. I love this church. I love this pastor. I love this mission. And I also love the number 17. 17 is a special number to me personally. I, I preached my very first sermon on the 17th day of January, 21 years ago. And, uh, and you guys are in the, the 17th year. And, and, and then I started, because I was stalking you, and I started looking at what you guys are doing and, and you're, you're planting a new church in Pomona and in Tijuana and then Kenya. So I started thinking about the book of Acts and Jesus told them, now listen, I want you to do ministry in Jerusalem, in Judea, which is just a little, a little outside of, that's Pomona, Samaria, Tijuana would be Samaria, and Kenya is the uttermost parts of the earth. You guys are aligned with the kingdom in ways that you don't even understand, you don't even recognize, you are just getting started. As my father-in-law would say, get ready, 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 to just blow for God's glory. If you believe it, take about five seconds and give God a radical shout of glory. I'll praise him with you. I'll praise him with you. I know kingdom when I see it. I can see kingdom. I can smell kingdom. And I smell the kingdom all over this place, the fragrance of Jesus. I feel yokes breaking right now, and the gates of hell themselves will not, cannot, shall not, dare not prevail against you. Yeah. I know kingdom when I see it, Pastor Marco. Yeah. 
So let's get into this. I want to draw your attention to Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 29, excuse me, 25 through 29. It's not an unfamiliar passage of scripture perhaps to you. Maybe it is. Hebrews 12, 25 through 29, it reads like this. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, who speaks. For if they did not escape who refuse him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he is promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of things, the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, not God made, but man made, things that are made, right? It says that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. So the removal of things that are being shaken, those things that are made so that the things which cannot be shaken can remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably. It's a Greek word. It literally means fully agreeably. Acceptably, fully agreeably. I'm in full agreement with your vision for my life, God. I'm in full agreement with that for which I have been grasped by you. I feel the Holy Spirit already. I got to teach and preach, but, but, but I'm in full agreement with the identity that you have placed on me. I am no longer tossed to and fro. I, I'm no longer questioning who I am or what I'm called to do or what I'm called to be. I, I'm coming into agreement. Something has happened that has brought me to a place where all I know to do, the only thing that seems reasonable, reasonable to do is to, to be in full agreement. I feel that. that that's what's going to happen to some of you tonight. Some, some of your questioning is going to be broken tonight. So, some of your wondering is going to be broken tonight. And you are going to come into agreement with who God says you are. And you're going to walk in something powerful, glorious, and victorious. No, we got we to gotta teach. We got to teach. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that by which we may serve God fully agreeably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Let's pray. The thought that I want us to, to, to ponder for a few minutes is this idea. What remains is more. I, I'll unpack it. What remains, what remains, what remains is more. That seems to contradict what remains. It, it speaks to something being left over. God sent me to tell you that what remains is actually more than what was before the shaking came. Are, are you tracking with me? What remains is more. Father, thank you so much, God, for this awesome place. I almost want to take my shoes off because the place that I'm standing on is holy ground cultivated by integrity, cultivated by prayer, cultivated by worship, cultivated by sacrifice and struggle. I can smell it. Holy ground. And I thank you. Now, Father, you love your sons and daughters so much. You love your children that are under the sound of my voice so much. And you love their children's children. And so, God, I want to be a good steward over this moment. 
So, Father, I pray that you would give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and insight and knowledge, God, and make, give me full use of the gifts of the spirit that not one person will leave here untouched. Stir up the gift that's on the inside of us, God. We got work to do. Have your way. I commit this to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. So honored to be here. Um, I, I want to be transparent for a moment. I'm in a very unique season in my life in ministry, a very unique. I, I, I've, th there's just this sense of the awe of God, the, the fear of the Lord that's, that's upon me. And it's, it's almost like, you know, over in the book of Joshua, I, I believe it's in Joshua chapter 3 or Joshua chapter 6. Just read the whole Bible. You'll find it, I promise. But it's when they were getting ready to cross over the Jordan River and God speaks to them. He tells them, essentially, don't get ahead of the Ark of the Covenant. And, and he ultimately says that you've never been this way before. He says, keep a little bit of space between you and the Ark of the Covenant. We know the Ark of the Covenant, you preached on it the other night, symbolic of the presence of God. But there was a specific instruction as they were getting ready to step into this new season. Not to get ahead of God, but then also not to be lagging behind God. But they were to stay three cubits behind. And then he tells them why. He says, because you've never been this way before. So, so be very careful. Don't, don't be ahead. Don't be behind. Be right in step. Watch. It's a, he said, watch the ark and watch the priest burying it. But this is a unique time. And I feel it in my spirit. This is a very unique time. And so I'm in this, this really interesting place. I'm praying more than I've ever prayed before in my life. I'm seeking more than I've ever sought before in my life because here is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of going back to what was. Right? See, see here is the thing. We're not coming out of a pandemic. We're coming out of a shaking. Yeah, I want you to understand it. But we're coming out of a, of a shaking. And there's always a word in, in the shaking. That's why that passage that we looked at opens up in Hebrews 12 saying, don't refuse the one who speaks. And then he talks about shaking. And even if you study scripture, God speaks. When it talks about him speaking, there's thunder and all this kind of stuff that takes place. So, so, so this is not a pandemic. Yes, practically, whatever. I'm not being silly. Pa practically, yes. But spiritually, no. It's a shaking. And, and what I'm afraid of, Pastor Mark, what I'm afraid of more than anything else is saying, oh, the pandemic is over. Let me go back. See, see, people are talking about back to normal. I'm, I'm terrified because there was a shaking for a reason. Listen, I'm not being insensitive to the fact that 600,000 people in this country alone lost their lives. Money was lost. Lives were lost. Peace was lost. So many things was disrupted. I, I am not being insensitive to all those things because I felt all those things just like everybody else. But I am saying that God allowed it and he allowed this shaking because I believe that God was trying to get us back to something pure. He, he was trying to get us, I believe, back to something better. And so, so, so I'm wrestling right now. I'll be honest, I'm wrestling and, I, and I'm praying and I'm seeking God's face because I don't want to go back to the pre-shaking mentality. <sighs> because here is the thing. He wouldn't have allowed the shaking unless there were some things that needed to be shaken loose. Are you tracking with me? It is what it is. This is not pretty. This is not sexy. This is not because we want to make God, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, he is a good God, but sometimes good don't feel good. And shakings, although, although greatly troubling and painful, have great purpose. 
They have great purpose. A shaking is to bring pruning and purification. Pruning and purification. Just look, look at what God did, man. <laughs> look at what he allowed. Like overnight, boom, the church gets shut down. Now, when I say church, I'm not talking about the kingdom because there is a difference. I'm talking about the system that we all have gotten used to, had gotten used to. And, it just, and listen, here's the thing. It doesn't even mean that we were doing anything wrong. Jesus says in John 15 that the person who bears fruit gets shaken. He calls it pruning. Why? So that it might bear forth more fruit. In other words, if I don't shake you, even in the good that you're doing, if I don't prune you, even in the great that you're doing, I cannot get my potential out of you because there's more in you than you think. Even when you do good, you get pruned. And that's when things get confusing. God, I'm doing all that I know to do. And I see fruit and God is saying, yeah, but you don't see you like I see you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordained you. Come on, somebody. I set you apart for great things and you might be satisfied with what you are producing, but I know what I put in you and sometimes I've got to shake it out of you. See, here's one of the things the Lord showed me. There are things in you that can only come forth in certain environments. Oh, God, I, I, I'm going to say it again. There's stuff in you right now that you don't even know, and you would be satisfied, oh, my God, with you. But God is saying, no, i got an investment in you, baby. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I've got generations assigned to your life. I've got nations assigned to your life. I know you're cool with you, but I ain't cool with you. I paid a price. You were bought with a price, baby, and you have got to be everything I put in you. And you know who understood this more than anybody was the Apostle Paul. I love what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, somewhere around verse 10. Read all the way through Revelation. You'll find it. <laughs> he says, I am not saying that I have already arrived. I'm giving you the PT translation. He says, I am trying, to, watch this, to apprehend what I have been apprehended for. Oh, you got to catch that. You got to catch that. Paul said, I haven't arrived yet. And this is, the man's moving in miracles, signs and wonders. He's talking to a church he planted. And he's saying, I haven't arrived. He said, he's saying, I'm trying to grasp what I have been grasped for. Is that anybody's testimony? Are you trying to grasp what you have been grasped for? Are you trying to lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold upon you? Where are my hungry people? Where are my people who look in the mirror every morning and say, there's got to be more to me than what I see? You got to be hungry. You got to be desperate. You got to tell hell no. There's more to me than this. Oh, God. And so the shaking is to bring pruning and purification. And this pruning and purification unlocks acceleration and multiplication. Hmm. I hear the Spirit saying, sometimes I got to slow you down to speed you up. I feel the Spirit of God. There's some people under the sound of my voice right now, and you have been in a waiting season, and you believe that God has, has ignored you or forgotten about you. 
You had a word coming into 2020. Come on, somebody. You thought 2020 was your year and 2020 was your season. Yeah, of development. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Of development. But let me tell you, do not despise development. There is nothing like when God blesses you on the inside. I know we want the outside blessing, but there ain't no blessing like when God blesses you on the inside. I know we want things. I don't know about you, but I want to be something. Holler at me if you want to be something. God, don't give me nothing until you make me something. Make me something. Make me something for my family. Make me something for my community. Make me something for my church. Make me something for my city. Make me something for this nation. Make me something for the nations. God, I know you can bless me, but please make me. Make me. Because here is what I have discovered. If you become something, you will always have something. And don't jump out the fire too quick. Uh-uh. No, no. Don't jump out the fire too quick. Yeah. I want you to be pink in the middle. Don't be pink in the middle. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Don't be pink in the middle. Well done, baby. Just, just turn to your neighbor and say, I, I, I want to be well done. I want to be, I want to be well. I want to be well done. I got to keep moving. I got to keep moving. God speaks through shakings. And prunings, he speaks. If you're taking notes, write this thought down. The shaking comes to bring you the gift of integrity. The shaking comes to bring you the gift of integrity. And when I say integrity, I'm talking about strength. When, when in I'm not a contractor. I've worked with enough of them. But, in, but th when we talk about the integrity of a structure, we're talking about the solid nature of a thing. Watch this. The reliability of the thing. And that's what shakings do. Shakings shake. Watch this. Everything that is unreliable about you. Everything that is unreliable, watch this, about your vision. I feel the Holy Ghost. Everything that is unreliable about your mission. Because God doesn't want you investing you in that which is unreliable. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And it says those are things that are being removed. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Being removed. And he says these things are created things. These things are man-made things. Could it be that there's a difference between your vision and God's vision sometimes? Could it be that there might be a time or two in our lives where what we believe is valuable is different from what God knows is valuable? And so what does God do? God shakes. Look at how our priorities have changed over the past 15, 16 months. We, we have discovered value. We, we've discovered what's really important. It's funny, things have flip-flopped. The things that we thought were important aren't important. And the things that we gave little time and attention to now are important. Families are stronger. We're parenting better now. We're seeing our children and so many other things. And so the shaking comes, it comes to bring you the gift of integrity. Being solid and reliable. There will always be more. I'm moving on because I'm going somewhere. There will always be more in the leftovers of a shaking than what was before the shaking. Sometimes, sometimes less is more. There's this song, uh, you're going to have to forgive me, by, by Drake and, and, uh, and Jay-Z had a line in, in his song by Drake. It's a song called Pound Cake. I'm not telling you to go listen to it. Okay. But, but, but he got something right in the song. 
And, and Jay-Z said, the homies say, Hove, they're not many of us. And then JC says, uh, that's all right, brother. I just cleaned it up. Less is more, there are plenty of us. Even Jay-Z understood that less oftentimes is more. I'm just going to run something alongside. And this even to, to the business people that are in the room right now. If I just might run a caveat, I'm a business person as well. Sometimes the reason why you can't break your business out is because you have too many visions. And this is for free. Can I digress and just bless my business people? You got too many visions. You're trying to do too much. Find that one thing that you are anointed to do that God has created an opportunity for you to do and work that thing like it is nobody's. I mean, eat all the chicken off the bone. I have an 11-year-old daughter. Let me tell you something. I don't eat all the chicken off the bone. I, I don't. I, I just, it, once I see that little black vein, I'm done. I'm done. Once I see that black vein, I can't do it. My 11-year-old daughter, Mackenzie, she like, Dad, that's a whole chicken. I can recycle a whole chicken out of way. And she will take that chicken wing, and that thing, I'm telling you, every all of the marrow, I mean, the, chi the I feel bad for the chicken all over again. <laughs> no entrepreneur, one thing, one thing and work it like my daughter eats that chicken. I mean, work that thing. Are you tracking with me? So now I want to pivot. I want to pivot. I want to give us three ideas to ponder so that we can have the right, what I would like to call post-shaking paradigm, right? I'm afraid to go back. Oh, I'm so, I'm and it would be so easy. And and it will be prosperous and all that kind of stuff. But I'm afraid because we're in a moment, there's an opportunity. Oh, God, this is a way we've never been before. It is different. We're in a different season. Listen, the world changed. Things shifted. So if I try to go back and work it with the same mentality, I'm going to miss it. That's called biblically putting new wine in all wineskins. So three ideas that I want you to ponder so that we can have this post-shaking paradigm. The first thing that I want you to consider is how you look at what remains. Because how you look at what remains is everything. Oh God. And some of you have been through some stuff. I get it. It's been rough. I feel the spirit of the Lord so strong right now. And as some of you, and you have been through so much that even your mentality, and you'll find yourself saying sometimes, all I got left is, I want to kill the devil. I want to kill the devil's voice tonight. Be be because you've been through some stuff, and, you, and maybe you feel like you're damaged good, goods, or, or maybe you feel like what you lost is greater than what you can ever gain again. And God sent me all the way from Los Angeles, California, up in here for me to tell you what you got left is more than what you lost. I feel the spirit of God. I'm telling you, there is more in what remains than what you lost if you will see it right. If you will see it right. I'm thinking about Gideon. Gideon went from an army of 32,000 men to 300. That, I mean, that, that, that's less than 1% of what he had. That's loss. You talk about a shaking. His whole army got shaken, and God's like, nope, you got too many. Somehow Gideon had to come to a place where he saw his future in what remained. I feel the ghost 
I feel the ghost, I feel the ghost, I feel the ghost, I feel the ghost, I feel the ghost. God wants to break a mentality off of you right now Be because the enemy has been trying to keep two or three people in this woe is me mentality, this all I got left mentality. But I'm telling you, there is a seed of multiplication in what has remained. If that's your word, give God about three seconds of glory. If that's your word, oh God. It's in what you got left. It's not in what left. It's in what you have left. Come on, somebody. It's not in what walked away. It's not in what left your account. It's not in what left your life. It is in what remains. God had to shake it. He had to shake it. Uh, see, see, what you don't understand, what we struggle to understand about God is that God sees all of the seasons. See, sometimes, I'm not this preacher that talks about pe people and haters. I love everybody. But here is the thing. Let's just speak practically. Sometimes God will remove a seemingly good relationship from your life because God sees what the relationship will be in the future. And you're sitting around, what's wrong with me? I don't know what's wrong with me. No, 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 no. God is seeing down the road. And he knows who you and I have to be and how we have to be aligned. In every season, I hear the Lord saying, stop weeping for Saul. I hear God saying, I got something better for you. I don't know who that's for, but it's for somebody. And so, so how you look at what remains is everything even in the years that you have left there's some people possibly in this room that you think you're past your prime that's a real big sneaky lie of the devil here's a sneaky one I if I could only go back let me tell you something I'm 48 I'm 48 right I would not go back to 40 or to 28 watch this because what I would gain in youth, I would lose in wisdom. And it ain't worth it, baby. See, see, thinking about as you get older, even thinking about the years that you have left, let me tell you something. When you get older, you get smarter. When you're older, you get wiser. Watch this. When you get older, your win ratio increases. Because you have learned, watch this, what not to do long enough and, and enough times to disqualify. See, young people are still trying to figure it out. You know, oh. <laughs> and that's wonderful. Love being young. The beauty of, of it is you have time sometimes to make these mistakes. But when you get older, you're like, no, no, no. I, I ain't got time to be doing this. Hey, ain't nobody got time for this. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm looking for the bullseye. I become patient. I become postured. I'm no longer impulsive. Come on, somebody. Where are my people over 40 in God's house? Come on, somebody. This is your season but you gotta see it right you gotta see it right mm. you get skilled mm. you're not throwing no wild punches anymore no 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 you're waiting for that opening you're not wasting energy you're not wasting time you wait and when you see that opportunity you move and you win don't be talking about I wish I can go back to the good old days. You're in the good old days. Oh, I got to get through this. See, when you have less of anything, you're more strategic with it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, I got to go. The first thing, we're talking about this post-shaking paradigm first idea I want you to ponder is how are you looking at what remains? How are you looking at, at what you have left? <laughs> God's not going to build with what you don't have. He's going to build with what you do have because God says it's enough. Number one, how you look at what remains is everything. Number two, this is important. Find 
the grace in what remains. Find the grace in what remains. What do I mean by grace? Grace is a powerful, beautiful word. Grace literally means divine enablement. It, it, it is the ability to do something, to produce or to manifest something that we cannot in our own strength. By grace we are saved through faith. It's by grace. Watch this. It's through faith, but it's by grace. The grace made the faith effective. Right? So in what remains, hear me clearly, in what you have left, you got to find the grace in it. Because there is a grace in what remains to build the rest of your life. I wish I could say that better. See, see, in this season, we're going to have to be minors, M-I-N-E-R, not M-I-N-R's. Miners, in my mind, those who mine, I feel God. See, that's what I'm doing right now. I, I'm looking at everything. I, I See, sometimes what God has for you is not easily accessible on the surface. <laughs> oh. The Bible says those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business in Great waters. These see the works of the Lord and his wonder in the deep. There's another passage of scripture. This is in Psalm 25 and 14, I believe. And it says the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, who are in awe of him, who, who revere him. So the point that I'm making is in this season where we're trying to escape normal, we're going to have to seek and dig and find the grace, oh God. That there's a grace in what you have left. But, but I'm telling you, you're going to have to pray for it. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to dig for it. And I'm telling you, you may have to fast for it. And I'm telling you, you may have to consecrate yourself for it. And I'm telling you, you may have to look crazy for it. You're going to need to get radical and desperate and hungry and say, God, in what I have left, I know that the grace of God is on it somewhere. So I'm going to get out my shovel and I'm going to dig this thing out. Come on, somebody. you got to look for the grace. There's grace. There's grace somewhere. There's grace over my life. There's grace over what remains. Then the third thing you got to do, and I'm done. You got to pay attention to how you look at what is left. You got to find the grace in what remains because it is there. It is there. And then the third thing you got to do is not be afraid, Pastor, you said it earlier, not to be afraid to blaze the trail. To blaze the trail. That passage says that, at the end it says that, that our God is a consuming fire. <laughs> he, he, he's a consume. What, what is he consuming? Anything that gets in the way of God being God and God fulfilling his purpose. I'm going to tell you right now. If you are not willing to put yourself out there and maybe look a little crazy. See, 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 here is the thing. Most people struggle with what they have never seen before. And most people limit their ability and quite frankly yours based on what has or has not been done. And if you are going to be the ministry, the man, the woman, the person, the family that moves mountains in this new season, you are going to have to be willing to get out there and blaze your trail. Shout, blaze the trail. I don't care if it's never been done before. I don't care if it's never been seen in my family. I don't care if I can't pick up a book and read about it. I am going to 
recognize and acknowledge the grace that's on my life. And if God is a consuming fire and I'm made in the image of God, then I am a consuming fire too. Where are my people? And you're asking God right now, stir up the gift of God that is on the inside of me. Set me on fire so the ropes of doubt, so the ropes of fear, for the chains will break and be consumed. That's what I want to pray into right now. That's it. I'm done. I've said what I needed to say. But I want to pray for some people. I believe that this wasn't an ordinary anniversary week. I believe this was Pentecost, baby, all over again. And God says that I'm not just going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to baptize you with fire so that you can blaze the trail that is assigned to your life. If God is speaking to you, is it okay if I do this? If God is speaking to you and you say, I want the fire, I want you to meet me at this altar right now. We're going to pray for fire. I want fire. Watch this. Because I'm going to need fire. I'm going to need fire. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Start worshiping. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank him in advance. Thank you. You're going to need fire for this new season. Yeah, to consume your doubt, to consume your struggle, to consume your fear. Fire, fire, fire. Come on, fire. I feel the Holy Ghost is in this place. Fire, 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 fire. Come on, come on. How much more of the Holy Spirit will God give to those who ask? Fire, fire, Spirit of the living God. We acknowledge your presence in this house right now. God, you didn't call us here to preach us up. You called us here to stir us up, to stir up the gift that you have placed on the inside of us. God, we're hungry. God, we're thirsty. We don't want average. We don't want normal. We want your fire. Spirit of the living God, since you cannot lie, pour out your spirit upon all flesh right now. Send your fire. Send your fire. Send your 